Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, away from politics and aspiration. We head straight to our second conversation. We're looking at the fact that the case of COVID-19, there's a decrease in uh, COVID-19 cases in Lagos State. Right, and we do have a, a physician who joins the conversation this morning. Now, the Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Professor Akin Abayumi, said that uh, there's been a decrease in COVID-19 positive cases. And as a result, the government has been focusing on having more people take the COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, we're going to ask ourselves, what have we done? What's the implication of the development in the overall fight against COVID-19? Like I mentioned earlier on, we have a health physician who joins the breakfast this morning. Dr. Gani Yu Jami Yu is a public affairs, I mean, I beg your pardon, a health uh, practitioner. Good morning. It's good to have you join us uh, on the breakfast. So, so, so let's let's talk about this. What are we doing differently, and what does this mean? Does this also mean that we have been testing very frequent, and does it also mean that there's been 100% compliance with the COVID-19 protocols? Uh, we're, we're having a reduction right here in Lagos State. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, respond to your last question before the first one. Uh, I don't think we will be conform, uh, conforming to the non-pharmaceutical measures. Uh, yeah, it has been a, 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 a huge concern because when you go around uh, the uh, labor states, barely uh, you see uh, a, a number of people you know, wearing their face masks, maintaining social distancing, or washing their hands. Even in places where there used to be facilities for hand hygiene, I don't think that uh, you can find some of those things uh, uh, anymore. Also, looking at in terms of uh, protocol of the capacity of passengers and vehicles and so on, you, I don't think such is being complied anymore. And even some uh, 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 commercial buildings, you hardly see what has been there when, at the peak of uh, the pandemic in 2020. In 2020. So, and in, in regards to that, I don't think uh, we've done very well in regards to that. I wouldn't want to say on the part of the government. But even the, the, the citizens uh, that are tired, that they are fatigued as regards to uh, 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 complying with the non pharmaceutical measures. As for the testing, it has been concerned, but at least we've improved on that. And, uh, and I think uh, compared to the earlier uh, period where we are having challenge with that. And again, looking at our protocol on, on travel advisory, you find that uh, I think we've done very well with regards to. People going out of the country and coming out of the country, uh, at least you must get tested. Uh, uh, the status of uh, a pass uh, inbound passenger need to be satisfied, uh, you know, to be sure before you or she can travel. I think on that aspect, uh, we've done very well. Thank you. Okay, uh, Dr. Jamil, um, so so you're saying that maybe we've done well with, with uh, uh, travel policies, and uh, but not so well with um, yeah. the non-pharmaceutical interventions as far as COVID-19 is concerned. Um, when the Omicron variant was announced, we heard that it had increased transmissibility, and there was palpable fear amongst those in the developing world, like Nigeria, that since it has increased transmissibility, maybe this was the one that would get us because we've been surviving the other ones, you know, uh, variants and all that. Not like how it's been abroad where you have a lot of cases and we see chaos everywhere. Um, so, so what happened? You know, what happened? Why didn't we see that fear come to pass in terms of the transmissibility and uh, our carelessness in this part of the world? Uh, thank you, Mama. You see, uh, the idea of transmissibility does not translate to severity of infection. Uh, you have to believe in me again that a lot of speculation. Today, the WHO will say it can, it can is highly transmissible. Uh, uh, it more severe tomorrow will be hearing another thing. But all in all, I think um, regarding yes, it's a highly transmissible. But uh, in terms of uh, severity of infection, it has been classified as being mild. Uh, 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 no, I mean milder, and I think that has contributed to that because. Uh, the rate of, especially in Nigerian uh, context, uh, even just by having some spikes in the, uh, between November and December 2021, we still found that uh, the rate of hospitalization was not much. Even the case fatality was not much. We only recorded a few, a, a, a few deaths. So 
I think, uh, as I've said, transmissibility does not lead to the level of infection. If they get trans people here can either get infected, but in terms of uh, clinical presentation and severity, it appears it will be not too, not too severe. Thank you. Yeah, the, the end of this fourth wave was announced in Lagos State um, by the Commissioner for Health, Professor Saki Abayomi, of course, in an interview uh, uh, on air. Um, this is Lagos State. How about the rest of Nigeria? Do you expect that probably uh, the presidential um, uh, task force on COVID-19 will, will make an announcement um, regarding this fourth wave? Uh, that's number one. Number two, um, do you foresee government relaxing some of its measures, like we said, not for some pharmaceutical measures, it's uh, um, the directives uh, put in place, limit, limitations in terms of gathering and size of crowds and events and even things like curfew um, in Lagos State, at least, after the announcement oh. of this, yeah. Well, after the announcement, one thing you need to understand is that uh, uh, Lagos State or Nigeria in particular is not in isolation. Uh, as long as the virus continues to be transmitted among citizens or in other clients, uh, we are not still free. So we cannot just you know, uh, uh, relax our measures. We need to still continue until we are able to achieve a kind of global control. That's why we can be talking about relaxing all the measures. Uh, if, before now, even uh, before the announcement of the fourth week, people have not been complying. But just that uh, uh, the citizens need to be well informed or they need to take uh, uh, self-responsibility and regarding to increase the number of cases we are witnessing. Uh, a reminder that if you are no longer complying, there is need for you to comply. The reminder that if you have not been vaccinated, you need to get yourself vaccinated. I think those are uh, pointed to what uh, was uh, uh, stated when we uh, were uh, in Lagos State uh, witnessed the fourth wave. But at this moment, I don't think so. And you have to agree with me that uh, on a daily basis, we have people coming to the country, and that is another source of infection. And even in December, when we recorded that spike, you will believe with me, that was the time when people are coming in for Christmas and New Year holiday. And that also contributed to that increase in spike in the country. So I think um, uh, we, need, we, we need to continue. What is our vaccination coverage? It's still below below 10 percent so that's uh, barely 10 percent if i'm to say for the first doses around 10 percent then for the second doses i'm not sure it's up to 10 percent where we're by now we should be talking about 40 percent and by the end of this year we should be talking about 70 percent coverage so we are still far far behind so the only way is that for us to go uh, people to get get themselves vaccinated and to continue to comply with the non-pharmaceutical measure which I'm sorry people are not doing that anymore. Even by all the So, so Dr. Jamiu, just, uh, just as we close yes. it down now, I'd I like, yes. like you to tell us, because you are an expert now, a health expert. So how did we then arrive at the decrease? What is it that we have been doing in Lagos? Because if we have not been complying, I mean, not to say that we, because I say that on a daily basis, the level of compliance with not where I mean, it's, it's almost nothing. At the end of the day, you find out that a lot of persons are out there not wearing nose masks, not respecting social gatherings. You see the transport sector, people are being packed in buses and what have you. So uh, what exactly did we do to arrive at this particular, you know, statistics and incident that we're having a decrease and that has ended the, the second, I mean, the fourth wave of the virus? I think if I'm to uh, uh, a kind of uh, give uh, some level of explanation, you believe in me that um, uh, the virus tend to uh, uh, spike, we, we tend to record more spikes when the when we uh, during cold temperature, that is the, the, when the temperature is uh, relatively low, maybe a lower degree and so on. And you, and you, for the past two three months, you know we've been witnessing that that may be a factor. Then for the fact that, uh, as I've said, uh, uh, we recorded these spikes during uh, uh, festive period when people are coming from other parts of the country, you know, to get uh, you know to come and see their loved ones. I think that has also also contributed to that because you know um, there are a lot of funny, funny and sharp practices among inbound passengers, and even at times you find that some people we 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 what we we notice is that some people we actually register uh, to a, any of the uh, convenient uh, uh, laboratory with the intention that when they get to the country they will, uh, they will go for testing, and at the end they don't comply with those protocols. I think that will that also will have contributed. I, 
you've heard of cases of people presenting uh, fake results and so on. So what do you expect? Maybe if there is somebody, and coupled with the fact that we are talking about Omicron virus, which tend to present uh, with a milder presentation. So what do you expect in the situation? Maybe somebody has it and is not showing, uh, 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 is asymptomatic or uh, presenting mild with milder symptoms. What do you think that kind of person, you know, go and, you know, uh, mingle with the family member. You, you, what do you expect? That will be a kind of community transmission. And I want to believe that has, uh, has actually contributed to what the spike we just recently recorded. But as I've said, we are not new with our uh, 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 surveillance uh, capacity. Uh, this is not the first time we've been recording any first, I mean, any wave in the country. So, in terms of capacity, I think we are we are we are more prepared in terms of. Uh, dictating, isolating people, providing management, uh, and, and so so that there is nothing new. What we just need was, was just to also, you know, go back to what we are used to and try to improve more so that uh, we can put the, uh, the 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 wave under control, and which I believe that what Lagos is and how they've succeeded. Thank you. Thank and again, you. sorry to say... You, In you one so sentence, one sentence, please. Yes. Okay, all right. Th 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 we have to we have to leave it at that, uh, uh, Dr. Gary Ujemi. Um, of course, yeah. we wish we had more time, but it's interesting to see, like Messi said, the statistics uh, and the numbers and the reasons for the end of this fourth wave you've given us, especially the, the fact that we had a spike towards the end of last year. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Dr. Gani Ujemiu is a public health physician and he's been our guest on the final leg of the breakfast this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Mercy, it's, it's quite interesting the, the, these numbers and the fact that we had we had a, a serious spike, you know, and a lot of people were concerned, um, you know, for um, this that spike as far as COVID nineteen, you know, and then the transmissibility and all that. And so it's so interesting to see that despite you know the fact that people are not uh, adhering to um, the non pharmaceutical advice, uh, that we're seeing it dip. You know, it's, it's, well, I mean, he probably might just have a point because at the time we also remember does, where the government yeah. mentioned December. I think we started experiencing that spike for yeah. you know December the seventh, twenty twenty one, and that's reduced. It probably might make uh, some kind of sense, but uh, we hope to have more conversations surrounding what we're doing differently. Yeah, because if you look at, you want to ask, yes, we know we're testing, but how much are we testing? You want to talk about the compliance? What exactly could be responsible? Could it also be the weather? These are some questions that we need more answers to, but. That's the size of our package this morning on the breakfast and we hope you've had a great time uh, the breakfast will return tomorrow the time again is seven o'clock in the meantime if you missed out on any part of the conversation it's all right to catch up on facebook twitter and instagram at plus tv africa and on youtube it's okay to subscribe plus tv africa lifestyle and plus tv africa as well i am messi boko do have a fantastic monday and i'm kofi patel so return tomorrow good morning